Okay, so uh, today I'm going to do another video on spray foam. I am by no means an expert, but I am an enthusiast and a believer. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to document how to convert a Harbor Freight uh, reciprocating saw, aka Sawzall, into a foam Sawzall. So the foam sawzalls have a Milwaukee saw, and that's probably a fantastic saw if this is what you do for a living. But if you are a homeowner or a building owner and you have a small scope of foam projects, that may not be right for you. So first things first, I'm using a Chicago Electric item 62370 saw. You can get these on sale for $20 or $30 and um, it has a swivel um, head on it. It'll, it'll rotate 180 degrees. And you know, it's not a bad saw. I bought one of these uh, two, three years ago uh, for um, helpers to assist me. And I thought, well, you know, it's only a $30 saw. If they destroy it, no big loss. Eh, it's still gone yet. And I thought six months ago, I thought, well, man, I've got a big project coming up. I'm redoing an entire house. I better get one of these just as a backup because they're on sale. And you know what? The original saw is still going. It has not been killed yet. So um, you can buy the adapter from a company called SBF Depot. They sell them for about $93. It's about 75 cents worth of aluminum billet that's been machined thank you to being for the machinists and you can buy 36 inch and 18 inch blades from SPF Depot for extraordinarily reasonable prices. If on the other hand you like to part with your money and feel scammed you can go to Amazon.com or eBay and purchase what I suspect are identical blades for more money. So the 18 inch blade was about eight and a half dollars and the 36 inch blades are about $17. They showed up in two days, great service, great organization to work with. So let's uh, talk about how to convert this. So, um, you know, this is honestly an experiment and the experiment is based on the premise that um, Harbor Freight uses Chinese tools which are closely designed replicas of better known tools. So I think this is a knockoff of the Sawzall, and I think that uh, the parts will probably be a dead ringer fit. If I'm wrong, I have to go buy a Sawzall and repeat this. Yeah, no big deal. So um, first things first, Harbor Freight is in, in, nice enough to include a, um, a wrench that you can use with the two Allen screws that are in one side of this, and if you remove those two screws, you can slide off the uh, blade foot. And then you want to peel back this rubber piece to get better access, and you'll need to plug the saw in, and you'll need to cycle it for one revolution to push the uh, nose out where you can get to it. Now, there are some videos on YouTube that show how to get this nose off. And um, they focus on a Milwaukee Sawzall, and strangely enough, this uh, chuck is almost identical. So what you want to do is you want to look at this, and you will find a spot where there is a, a gap or a crack in the, this little tiny ring that sits at the, at the nose. And actually, i got to get a flashlight so I can see it. Okay, so I've got my underwater kinetics backup dive light, which is awesome. It's been going strong for many years, and it'll give me the light that I need to see this. And once you found it, you just want to stick a screwdriver or a pick under there. Yep, that's it right there. And I just pinch it with my other fingernail. And then you can pull this ring off. 
I'm sure Harbor Freight uses the finest quality metal in these springs, at which point this thing should pop apart and you can start to disassemble it. There's a pin that'll fall out of there, a spring, and then if this is exactly a copy, this whole damn thing comes apart at that point. Yep, there's a pin in here, so I've just got to punch this pin out. So my bet is that because this is new, there's not a whole lot of force in here or holding this in. So I'm just kind of pulling this out. This is a one-way conversion. If this doesn't work, it's $20 that goes in the trash. Yeah, in an ideal world, I'd probably have this thing clamped into a bench and I'd zoom the camera in. But honestly, if you're thinking about converting your own tools, I think you're probably uh, mechanically inclined enough to follow along. So this is where all those little Allen wrenches that you get and never use, the ones that come with things, this is where they'll be really good. So you want to find one you can fit in here and then you want to just use it to get this pin out of here. This is kind of neat as we're banging, there are more pieces that are uh, coming off this thing. I don't care. The only piece that I want that I need is the shaft and it's mechanically secured according to the parts diagram. Alright, so that pins out of there and the nose piece comes off. Now for the moment of truth, let's see what size wrench this is. Alright, I need to go get an Allen. Oh, never mind, I brought the right one with me the first time. Amazing. I do need to go get some Loctite though because I have zero confidence that this stuff will stay here without it. So. Okay, so um, I happen to be using the Harbor Freight Threadlock, which they sell for a dollar uh, a bottle. A bottle is 0.33 ounces. Um, it's the same stuff, I think. It's, it's the same strength, and I've had the same results as the name brand um, Loctite. And uh, so let's see. Moment of truth. And it fits on with zero problems. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got it fully seated. All right, so I have managed to mount this completely. Now I'm mounting it at a 90 degree angle because I think I want to trim vertically. You may want to turn it if you have other ideas in mind. I'm going to put some thread lock on here and then I'm going to snug these uh, Allen keys down. I just happen to be lucky enough to grab the right Allen wrench. I have no idea what size it actually I don't even think this is the right size. I think it's actually, it's a standard and these are metric or vice versa. But you know what? It's working. So that's all that matters today. Okay, so it is a standard, uh, it's a 3 16 and I'm going to add some Loctite to the bolt that secures the blade. This is a low strength Loctite, so it just kind of gums up the threads. One of the things I really like about these blades is they seem to be fairly heavy duty. So I don't think they're going to give me any grief when it comes to flex. And while this coupler was um, quite frankly overpriced at $93, 
I'm happy to have it. So at this point, I think it's done. It's ready for a little testing. Okay. Seems to work like a champ. I'm gonna run around this wall here and reposition the camera and then I'll actually cut some foam with it. Okay, so uh, I apologize this is not the best setup for demoing this, but I'm working by myself right this moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and just see if I can sweep one of these wall cavities and trim some foam. So the larger blade would definitely be better for this particular application, but it does work. And I've actually got a little bit of foam up here to trim. Oh, this is very much, this is almost perfect. So there you have it. Uh, this solution cost me about $120 plus the cost of the blade and the blades range from eight to $20 a piece. And uh, I appreciate you watching my video. I hope you found this informative and you can probably save yourself about $300 by doing what I've done on this video. And uh, if you're concerned about the longevity of the saw, Harbor Freight has a ridiculously cheap and ridiculously reliable extended warranty. I think this all comes with a 90 day warranty and I think that uh, you could probably extend the warranty and you might get away with that a couple times before they realize what you were doing to their saws. Um, have a great day and again thanks for watching.